Uh, by the way, Andrew. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good morning. We're gonna, have, off, we're gonna have to have dueling. Month, right? We're gonna have to have dueling sound effects. By the way, I'm gonna make a sound effect out of the Maggie Smith uh, line. Tacky. That's tacky. That's tacky. tacky. (laughs) Uh, That'd be a good one. That would be a good one. Hey, just real quick, Andrew, we have a Corey here. So why don't you just hold on for a second? We have questions for Corey. I do want to say that this afternoon at four o'clock, the Planning and Zoning Commission is meeting today to discuss a very important matter, decorative fancing. Uh, and oh, by the way, they're going to talk about building. I know that's what I think about all this. I know. I mean, I had a perfect solution for it. It's like, listen, we need to define the setback so I can have a moat. Uh, you know, the palisades with the yeah. spikes coming out of it, right? Yeah. And then I want to have critters down in the I was going to say, deal. what's right. the policy on uh, um, having alligator, alligators uh, and crocs? Yeah. You're going to want a crocodile. Right. It's Crocodiles, a little bit more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive. Or like a, like a river lizard, like a uh, monitor lizard, you know? A monitor so, lizard? Yeah. Well, they're just more scary. They, they are don't really scary. do anything. Uh, Komodo dragon. Komodo dragon, though. They would eat some of these deer whole. They wouldn't even, like, stop. They would probably help with the yeah. deer population. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, the, the PNZ meets today at 4 o'clock. And uh, like I said, they're going to talk about decorative fencing and setbacks and height fencing. But the real big news of the day is they're going to begin the process of annexing 200 acres. And I have to explain this every single time because people don't get it. Like, Hal Peterson Middle School. Not the old Hal Peterson Middle School on Sydney Baker, folks. The new the one. The new Hal Peterson Middle School. They're talking about putting in 700 homes uh, in that area behind the middle school. And then on front of Loop 534, in front of this project, would be 200,000 square feet of retail space, um, according, to the, according to the plan. So mm, that'll be the day at 4 o'clock. Uh, Andrew, how are you? What's, how's the economy looking? Just real quick, what's going on with the economy? Tell us, give us, give us yeah, a quick I'll, update. I'll blow through this. And, yeah. and I love that little blurb because I think, you know, Corey... Uh, knows as much as anybody that we need that housing. So that's a good topic here. Uh, Andrew Gay here with Texas Hill Country Advisors. We offer securities and investment advisory services through Next Financial Group, member FINRA SIPC. This is your market update for Thursday, June 1st, 2023. All three major U.S. stock indexes closed down on the day yesterday. Still awaiting that debt ceiling deal, even though it got passed through the House. Uh, you know, it faces a vote in the Senate, possibly over the weekend to see if that can actually get through before Monday's June 5th deadline, the updated deadline of June 5th. Uh, NATO members discussing and actually are scheduled to meet ahead of uh, a summit that they have planned next month to discuss some options for Ukraine. Uh, they described it as somewhere landing between the support that Israel has in formal NATO membership um, and, and because they you know, the U.S. is kind of of the, of the mind that they need to slow down and not necessarily be become a formal NATO member yet, but they do, we do need to provide some kind of security uh, support for them. On the economic front, uh, Fed Harker spoke yesterday, mentioned a possible pause for rate hikes in June. We have swung back the other way as far as expectations and what the market is expecting for the Fed June meeting and rate hike expectations. We were, offic- we were initially uh, looking at that we're going to that fed was going to hike a quarter percent and the fed in the june meeting but now it looks like that the market is expecting them to not hike after fed harker's speech yesterday jobless claims came out this morning holding steady above the 200,000 level uh but still the four week average is kind of falling we think that that'll probably continue to tick back up the other way um over the summer months <laughs> U.S. manufacturing is due out. Some data is due out this morning. It's actually due out right now. I have not looked to see how that that came out. But it's been in contraction territory since October of last year. And that's it. That's all I, that's all I got for you this morning. Liz. Yeah, look at this shot, uh, Andrew. <laughs> it's uh, No, look at that. Jeremy with the tell right there. Look at that. He's, 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 rubbing he's, telling, his, he's telling you he's still third. He's, he's looking at his ear. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good job, Andrew, as always. So pensive. So, yeah. yeah, he's very... Andrew's listening, or Jeremy's listening very intently to a presentation Yeah, he here. does that. Oh, and they're doing, yeah. they're doing like a little song and dance number, so... <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew, stick around. Listen, if you have questions for uh, Corey, stick with us for a minute, okay? You yeah, might have some I, uh, you might have some I questions. can hang around just for just for a minute. And actually, Corey, I don't I don't think we've ever had a face to face conversation, but we have a mutual friend from my Wells Fargo days, Juanita Mendoza. Yeah. Oh yeah, Juanita. You know oh, absolutely. Yeah. She's still in San Antonio. You know, I'm not sure because we left about a little about three years ago from Wells Fargo and started our own 
uh, investment business here, but I have not talked to her since then. But yeah, yeah, she's a good friend of mine from my Wells Fargo days, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, all right, the, the bit, first big question of the day for Corey Edmondson is: is this is gonna? He's gonna probably come over and punch me in there. All right, will the that surgery... would be a great live show? Wouldn't that be good? Okay, here it is. Ready? <laughs> here, 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 here we come. Oh. Here we come. Will the surgery center be done before the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> that is, we give. Uh, we give ourselves a hard time about that. So the parking lot behind the hospital, it seems to be taking forever. Does yes. happen. Um, and, and so it, it's, it's more complicated than just pouring asphalt and doing curbs. It, there's a lot of drainage, a lot of utilities, a lot of uh, and you things probably that, find more things that you're like, oh, well, well I, do that. Yeah, you know, and the general contractor is, is trying to navigate some of that. And, and I think just labor also has been a struggle in yeah. construction. And so right. they're... Um, uh, they're struggling to kind of keep things rocking and rolling. But yes, the parking lot, the parking lot will be done before the surgery center. Okay. It should be, not the opposite. Because I live, <laughs> see, I live back, uh, I've lived back on, off of, off yeah, of Rim, like Rim Rock. There. Yeah, Oh, so that road's been, it's closed. Yeah, it's so been, that's my, that's yeah, my, it's not frustrating. <laughs> yeah. and you have to take the long <laughs> route. This is yeah. really more about Lewis. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, when is that road going to be open? <laughs> well, I think it, I think it, but more, on a more serious note, it does speak to the fact that there is significant, you know, it just shows you that we have significant issues when it comes to, to grading, you know, right. and, and, and providing that uh, kind of material. Because I've watched this thing with fascination happen over the last few months. In fact, there's a true, did I tell you a story about I got my car stuck in there, right? Yeah. 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 You don't need to hear that, but. Okay. But yeah. yeah. You went down that, in there to check it out. That's called a liability. Yeah. You don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. I went down there. Well, the, you know Allegedly. How you had it all sort of, it was all perfectly graded. You know, graded and there was a little, the little herd of black buck that lived back behind there. Yeah. And they were cruising along, you know, in this kind of barren setting. I thought this is kind of a cool photo. So, I, of course, I drove down there. So you went off roading. I went off roading in my alleged my alleged SUV. Allegedly. And then I got stuck. And fortunately, Allegedly. there was wood that was laying around, and I was able to Put shimmy under. myself and get out of there. But <laughs> anyway, that was a true story. That's what he would have done yeah. if that's what happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, Corey. The big question for the day here is: Is the pandemic now is officially over? Um, and you know, we I still read people who are dismissive of of the pandemic. But I want you to tell us, what was it like? What what has it been its impact on Peterson Regional Medical Center specifically? I mean, it, it, from a cost perspective, from a staffing perspective, your how, mental health, perspective. your mental health perspective. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, what was that like for you? Yeah, so it it, uh, it ultimately cost us millions of dollars uh, in a variety of things, mm -hmm. from increased supply costs to paying agency nurses to come in because we didn't have enough nurses for the volume of patients that were coming in uh, and the uh, the and the, the psychological mental aspect of it also is lingering uh, I guess there would be a little bit of leftover from that um, the pandemic in and of itself is quote over uh, mm -hmm. you know the in, in the way that the there's no longer a public health emergency that ended May 11th of course yeah. it started January 1st or January 31st of 2020 uh, so for multiple years, it was um, ongoing. But um, I, I would tell you that Pearson Health as a whole, proud of the organization, proud of the team and the staff, they, we did not let COVID manage us. We managed COVID. Right. Uh, right. And uh, today we still get COVID patients that get admitted. It's a, uh, kind of a rarity. Um, it, it's manageable at this given point in time. People aren't as sick up from it as they have been in the past. I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked for a while um, on where your wh where its impact has been, but it, it's kind of gone, a, it's ebbed and flowed, and you even had a little period, I think, last year when you had both flu patients and COVID patients, you know, coming into the hospital, which showed you the veracity or the, uh, you know, how difficult the flu season was in in on the heels of COVID, so. Yeah, that was a uh, uh, kind of a, a dual nightmare uh, yeah. for, for both of those uh, to be coming in at the same time. And, and oftentimes people, you know, they, they reflect the same um, symptoms. And uh, so it's a, it a matter of testing and treating and, and all. But thankfully, uh, the, last, the last round or last bout of COVID wasn't as mm -hmm. serious. It wasn't affecting people as... as as right. the previous ones. The, um, and, and even during all of this, you know, one of the, you know, there, there's, well, we've, we've well documented the challenges. You talked about the visiting nurses, 
uh, the nursing shortages, which actually predate the pandemic, ha- has it exasperated um, the nursing shortage, you know, the pandemic or the people's, you know, response? You've, you've had some very, you, you wear your heart on your sleeve uh, a few times, and I've seen you when some of these things have happened, you know, during the pandemic where, you know, nurses have been assaulted by patients. Um, are you still seeing people wanting to get into the profession or is it still a challenge? It's a challenge for a variety of reasons. A lot of people left the industry, nurses left the industry and went to do other things, other other types of careers. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, they were like, I didn't sign up for this kind of a, a mentality. Others retired early, doctors retired early. Uh, and, and right now, uh, where the uh, cost and compensation uh, to recruit and hire uh, nurses is so is, is expensive, one of the challenges across the nation is that universities, schools of nursing are not being able to keep uh, professors or um, uh, to, to teach the nurses right. of, of, of things. And so there's a shortage of nurses coming out right now because they just don't have enough teachers. They got enough capacity uh, to do that. But, you know, the, the supervisor can go and be a, ho- be a nurse in the hospital, make more money than they can at the university. Right. And so that's what they're doing right. or going to agency and making, uh, making more money. So it's just a, it's kind of a, um, a perfect storm of a variety of things, but it's going to take us. I'm, uh, there's no statistics on this. It's just my personal perspective. It's going to take us probably another three or four years to climb out of all of this mm-hmm. from, Getting, getting staffed up, getting things normalized, getting reimbursement to where it, it catches up with the cost of care, uh, yeah. with staffing, compensation, and supplies. Uh, hospitals are hurting across the nation. There are, uh, across the nation right now, I just heard a statistic, there are 146 hospitals about to close wow. in, throughout the nation. Uh, in that Texas, I forget. Yeah, it is. They, they just can't make it. They're struggling financially. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's the toughest part of it, too, is to think about, you know, all these rural hospitals that, that provide service. I mean, we were talking about this, you know, previously. That if, I mean, there's hospitals, but, I mean, you're the, the biggest hospital between here and El Paso. I mean, there's nothing kind of as big as you really in between, right? Right. On so, I-10, there's on not I-10, anything. On I-10, right. There's not anything. So that, it's a huge, there's a huge kind of, you know, gap there, obviously. Um, and, I, and I always look at it from this perspective, too, like my own... My mother, who just came and visited earlier this year, told me that she had just retired finally <laughs> from nursing at 75, and that it was she would work in the clinic uh, at a hospital like two days a week, and it it caused a little bit of a problem. You know, right. I'm like I, I'm surprised they didn't kick you out. She's like, oh, they really like me. I'm like, well, I mean, you're 75, but <laughs> they needed her. Yeah, they needed yeah, that expertise. Choice. You know, and so. Um, but, you know, even despite all of these issues, you're, you, you got the money raised for the surgery center. That thing is going up. And you got some aggressive plans in place. Uh, the ACC is going to be turned into what exactly? The Ambulatory Care Center. Yeah. So, the, uh, yeah, the surgery center coming out of the ground, the steel coming up, the crane out there. It's mm-hmm. exciting. Uh, it is exciting to go by there. It yeah. is. You know, it, and it just it makes the hospital, makes the community feel alive from that uh, perspective when you see that kind of uh, activity. Uh, after we're done uh, building the surgery center, what we're going to do is move, move it out of the ambulatory care center where we do surgeries now yeah. we'll move it we'll move our outpatient surgeries over there and then we'll go back into the ambulatory care center and do some renovation that's a 20 year old building mm-hmm. that that was the first building almost over there on that campus uh south of the river yeah um, and we'll expand and renovate for physical therapy uh, we need to grow uh, our physical therapy there um uh, a lot of capacity uh, challenges associated with that and uh, our imaging department will also um, get some adjustments and some expansion. Right. Uh, and those are critically important things because, you know, I've, I've been in, have you been to the ambulatory care center and been cared for? I have. Yeah, have you? What? I had outpatient surgery there. Did you? So mm-hmm. I've had the... And I've had like, uh, I think I had to have like my EKG for my my, my surgery there. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, yeah. Been, I've, I've yeah. spent some time in the ambulatory. I care. took a spectacular nap in there. I <laughs> Yeah. I guess uh, technically nice, I did nice too. Procedure, whenever they yeah. knock you out. They yeah. did my surgery. I did wake up during my surgery, but they were very kind. Put they put, right me, back, put me right back, back out. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's when I broke my ankle. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. When, uh, when I had my uh, colonoscopy done there, they drag you in, they put you on the thing, the nurses are all there, I'm like, put me out. Woohoo! 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and. No, but they were all very kind. Yeah. Because, like, I was by myself. Right. You know? Yeah. And, like, you kind of feel like a kid again because right. you're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I'm in a gown and exactly. I like, don't have any clothes on. Right. <laughs> um, but they were all very kind and patient and that good. Because, like, that's like, but it was a pretty major surgery right. for me and I yeah. couldn't walk. So, right. like, I could run away if anything exactly. went wrong. Um, but all the nurses were great from start to finish. Yeah. So, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we were talking about before we got started on the show was that. Um, we did a little piece on breast cancer and the importance of breast cancer screening and one of these task forces that looks at, you know, best practices, best recommendations, you know, recommended that women now 40 to 49 get mammograms every two years now, which was, it was kind of went against their original thinking, but Peterson was already ahead of the game on that. Uh, where else are you ahead of the game at? Do you think as far as like, you know, exceeding expectations or exceeding, the recommendations that are sort of like a baseline. Where, where, where else are you doing some good work at? Yeah, let me start with with a, a th- foundational statement, which is our vision of being uh, providing world class care today, tomorrow, and always. Mm-hmm. And what that means, our board did about three, four years ago. Uh, we said, well, what does that mean? Let's mm-hmm. define that. And they said, well, we want to make sure that we are in the top ten percent uh, of hospitals uh, in all the things that we do, whether that be safety, quality. Uh, experience. We, we want to be top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we started reaching and, and we have, re- we've been on that journey for quite some time, but uh, there are lots of things that we're ahead of the curve on as right. far as uh, how we hold ourselves accountable to from quality aspect uh, and safety. We, we're, uh, the processes and plans that we have in place really allow us to, to achieve a lot of those things. Um, you know, surgical procedures, um, not that nobody else does this, but from a robotic standpoint, uh, we're doing a lot of robotics procedures. We continue to grow that uh, evolution of, of what we're doing, both general surgery, gynecology, urology are some of those uh, areas we do uh, robotic surgery. Uh, imaging, we have new equipment. We, we just uh, are purchasing a brand new MRI, uh, which is going to be uh, allowed. Now, the question is, will it be quieter? That's a big question. No. Will it be quieter? Well, I had my when I had my knee looked at it, man. That thing is. What did it sound like? It, <laughs> 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 yeah, that, yeah. That, you do, that, a, uh, you do the, a great impersonation. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The the the, mag, the magnet. Uh, it'll be a. Uh, uh, I don't know. I can't determine whether it's going to be quieter or yeah, not. But right. it's good. the images and stuff that it will. The images show will be better. Will be ten times better. Well, uh, that's will be a, well. That's what's so. amazing is the technology continue. I mean, how do you keep up with technology? You know. Yeah, it's constantly changing, right. uh, and and we have to make sense of it from a financial investment standpoint. Yeah. Uh, whether uh, the technology uh, is worth the investment, or do we wait another three, four years and buy the the next version or edition of the technology. By the way, I want to, I want to cut to our little shot of our live studio audience. <laughs> Again, yeah. They're excited. Yeah. Hey, yeah. can I ask you a question? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask a question. Uh, well, and I, forgive me if I'm going to make you repeat yourself, but I just wanted to ask specifically, what role do you think upward wage pressures has played in some of those challenges that hospitals and healthcare centers, um, including yourself, has, has seen in the last Three years. You kind of touched on yeah. it earlier, but a major, a major role. Um, you think our, it's like seventy-five percent of the issue versus income, expense management, balance sheet management. It's mainly upward wage pressure. Yeah, I'd say fifty percent of that probably is wage pressure. Mm. Another probably thirty-five percent is reimbursement from commercial payers and or from the government um, is another percentage, and the supply cost will be will make up the other. But okay. compensation is just there's really not anybody at the hospital. There's nobody that makes less than fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, uh, that's our n- new minimum wage, right. and I know that's not unusual for for some folks. But uh, here's the challenge with with hospitals: we're like a retired person, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is we don't we don't um, get to raise our prices and when we want yeah, to increase rates, income. right? We're on a fixed yeah. income, yeah. Medicare, uh, and our commercial payers, we're, we're, we negotiate these rates. So when we raise uh, a nurse's pay or our housekeeper's pay, that just, that cuts out from our, uh, our profitability or bottom line uh, in the end. But if you were to go to uh, HEB and HEB says, you know, I want to raise my cashiers from $10 to $15 an mm-hmm. hour. 
guess what they get to do? They get to raise their prices on their right. milk and selling. eggs and cheese. And, and, and so they pass on that cost to us. That's right. mm-hmm. And they can, That's right. they can handle that. We can't. We're, it just cuts out from our bottom line. That's where hospitals are getting hurt is we have no recourse for, uh, to, to raise or uh, make more money. Right, right. And, I think, and there's some things you guys do, too, that are interesting to me. Like you'll, you'll, you'll go in and you'll say, like, if, you, if you pay this today, you know, here's, here's the yeah. deal. And I, I, I always take advantage of it. I'm like, oh, here we go. I'll give you that right now. Right. Otherwise, it's going to be a significant out-of-pocket well, expense. Well, cost of care is already yeah, expensive cost of for care. so many people. But, you know, you, you have the double whammy here. There's people here that, you know, we've talked about this before, that don't believe, like Andrew was saying, that, you know, that, Kerrville pays what it pays, but you guys are competitive with anybody in San Antonio. But we have the double whammy here of of the affordability of Kerrville, and increasingly, uh, Gil Salinas has talked about this before that more and more people just driving in. They're just like, oh, I'm going to drive in from San Antonio. I'll bite the bullet and commute in. Is that what you're seeing at, at the hospital right now, or what? What, what does your workforce look like? Yeah. So. Um I had uh, some statistics run from HR the other day, and, and I'm probably not going to uh, correctly state those, but I'd say 25% of our staff come from out of town, mm. uh, from San Antonio, Bernie, Junction, Fredericksburg, um, everybody else maybe lives in, in the county, right? Uh, but they certainly would will live in They're Comfort, Center, in. Par- uh, Center Point, um, Ingram, and outside the uh, uh within the county but outside of kerrville proper uh, it's a struggle i mean mm-hmm. we um the, the challenge we're growing as an organization mm-hmm. and to grow we need people yeah you can't get people if you don't have housing right. so you really got to start in the basics and get some attainable housing so people have an expectation here when they go out to eat they w- they want to be served yeah um well if there's not a waitress or waiter to handle that they get upset well they well, they can't afford to live here, so they right. can't serve the community. Uh, and we need attainable housing for all levels of people. Right. School, teachers, the firemen, the nurses, everybody needs that when, access. Um, right. You know, the purchases you guys made around the campus currently, you know, which includes where the parking lot's at, I mean, you, you foreseeably you could put some more more you have some growing room there too you've talked a little bit about housing is that something still that you're thinking about or is that on the back burner yeah no it's on the forefront of our minds mm-hmm. so uh what lewis is uh, alluding to is um because of our growth and the construction of the new surgery center we were landlocked mm-hmm. so we acquired the land behind us 157 acres um as for our future growth if mm-hmm. we need uh to expand the hospital or build a new mob or something of that nature we've got that land to do it for the next 30 40 years right what else could go back there well how, do we solve our own problems and build housing uh, i think that's our long-term solution we we have to have an immediate solution which currently we have a partnership with shriner university mm-hmm where uh, they have uh, a couple of apartment complexes for their seniors that were on campus that were underutilized. And so uh, we're, in essence, uh, partnered with them, and we're basically leasing uh, those uh, apartments and putting people there. Uh, And we've been able to recruit and retain people because because of that. So that has been a tremendous asset. That's great. That's yeah. a great partnership. That Shriner's kind of helpful once in a while, aren't they? Truly. They, they are helpful. I remember like, when we opened back up in 2020 and even well into 2021, um, there was a bulk of... that We had a slew of people. We were already having a lot of influx of people coming in that were looking to relocate to Kerbal. That's, that's always pretty common, given the state of things. But during that time specifically, it was a lot of healthcare workers that were already working here. They already had a job. And their question was, I need a place to live. And we were like... <laughs> well, you, you and me both, tough. kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, we had there was a lot of that that they were all looking for places to. Live. Let me show you yeah. the van down by the river you can live in. Right. How about that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, it's always good to have Corey Edmondson here. We 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 promised uh, Ashley Hoppy. <sighs> that we would get you out of here by 9.30. It's 9.28. Yeah. Because uh, you got other things to do uh, today. Uh, but Ashley Hoppy's leaving us. I, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm sad for you, man. I really am. Yeah. She, that EA guy, what's with, with that guy? Taking her away from us, you know? Come on. Yeah. Told, told you know, uh, we told the EA, congratulations, but everybody at the hospital is mad at him because yeah. uh, he's taking Ashley away mm-hmm. from us. Right. Ashley's, uh, for those who don't know, Ashley uh, uh, helps me, assist me, uh, and other executives at the hospital and keeps us 
organized and manages uh, manages a lot of things. She brings a lot of joy and light to the hospital. So everybody's calling her and coming up and oh no, you're leaving us. And yeah. But anyway, you know, kudos to uh, Ashley and EA and the family and uh, their uh, next journey in life. Uh, r- real quick before you go. Um What's the biggest thing after the surgery center that's coming after this? I mean, that's that's a big project. I mean, that's a fifty million dollar project. But what's 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 next? Yeah. So really, running parallel to that is uh, we're going to be opening up a, a health and wellness center on the second floor of our home health building for really an expansion of our physical therapy uh, area. Yeah. Uh, but it's also for our employees to go and exercise. It's a it's a resource now, and that's going to be a, a good recruitment tool and a retention yeah. tool. Right. Um, That's very cool. And then we'll go back into our ambulatory care center and do a multi-million dollar renovation uh, there. And then, and beyond that, we're evaluating other other things. Uh, what what could work? We've got uh, we're spending a lot of money. I can tell you that. Yeah. And, and and so it's it's a matter of okay, what's next? How do we manage that? Let's make sure we we've got these things in working order, and then we'll. We'll, we'll pursue the next best thing. Well, like I said, you know, um, I've been very pleased with the care that I've, and I'm not, you know, and see, here's the beauty of this thing. I can say these things because, because Peterson's not a sponsor of this show right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say these things. I go to Dr. I go to Dr. Barecki, uh, mm-hmm. who's over, who's a character who's over in Fredericksburg, actually. So I drive over to Fredericksburg and I bypass that other hospital and I go right down the street on 87 to, uh, the, the beautiful, uh, facility that Peterson has in Fredericksburg. Uh, and I met Barecki when he was working here, mm-hmm. when he was first recruited, but the, uh, the facility wasn't open in Fredericksburg. Uh, the gastroenterologist I went to was amazing. Uh, Dr. Is it Acosta? Acosta. Yeah. And uh, kind of changed my life, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, impressive. yeah, I mean, you, you put me on this disgusting medicine, but it actually works. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to have it for the rest of my life, but it's going to be it works. It's fabulous. So, I mean, good. I've already had two I've had some really good experiences with with Peterson. So, you, uh, you know, uh, I, I just just a real plug real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you talk about experience. We we want to we provide great safety and great quality at the hospital. But, you know, oftentimes it's, well, people grade you on. Well, how was I treated? Right. And uh, we just uh, were awarded for the seventh year in a row a health grades, uh, top 10 uh, ex- uh, patient experience awards uh, in the nation. Uh, and when you, for the seven years in a row, that puts us in the top 10% of hospitals in the nation and the top 1% of hospitals in Texas wow. to achieve that. Wow. Uh, so we, um, the goal is to provide exceptional, uh, our, mis- our mission is providing exceptional compassionate patient-centered care, and that is part of our DNA, uh, treating everybody with respect, and, um, and they, staff does a great job. Great. Great job. Great job as always, Corey. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it very yep. much. Thanks for having me. Well, anytime. Uh, Andrew Gay, uh, give us a financial update real quick while we get Corey out of here. What's going uh, on? Uh, nothing much. I think I already did the rundown. You I don't did know the if rundown? I have anything to add to any yeah, of that. There's not Come on much, now. <laughs> there's not too much exciting happening right. on the economic front. It's all about the debt ceiling, man. We'll see how that plays out um, right. as we approach the Monday deadline uh we're just live look at jeremy real quick he's pointing at things so all right with that we're gonna we're gonna throw it over to uh, Lewis, you're, yeah. you're lucky he hasn't like decided to pick his nose or something I know. at this point well, he, he would was, be very upset with you he was scratching earlier so yeah. we, we get it all right leslie uh <laughs> give us an update on what's going on yeah so. let's talk about it there's a lot of stuff going on thanks 